Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Iranian Market Minute. Today is Thursday, May 19th, and this is episode number 126. My name is Justin Hewn. I am your host. I'm the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. As always, nothing that you see or hear in this podcast is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing and always take responsibility for your own choices. All right, welcome back. I do appreciate all of you. Um, if you do enjoy these videos, please uh, like the video, share it around, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. You will be reminded whenever we publish a new episode, which is almost every day, but not tomorrow. Tomorrow is our May members only webinar for Uranium Insider Pro members. We do look forward to seeing you there. Um, if you cannot make it to the live webinar, it will be recorded for your replay. Uh, later on in the day, posted to the website that you can stream it from the website in the members area. So uh, we have so much to discuss. We have another um, uh, exciting guest to have on, who I think will give us a lot of insight to what's going on in the uh, in the markets. And um, very much looking forward to these events. These are two hours long. We're going to do uh, an extra long Q and A in tomorrow's webinar, um, as there's much to discuss and there's a lot of questions coming in. And um, I think that there's a lot to go over. Uh, there's just news flow coming through, uh, coming through a fire hose right now when it comes to uranium uh, fundamental development. So looking forward to that tomorrow. And this episode uh, that you're listening to right now is going to be a little bit short because um, I'm deep in preparation mode for the webinar tomorrow. So I'm gonna breeze through the uh, scoreboard. We're gonna look at the charts, a couple of things that I'm highlighting. In the mailbag section, I'm just gonna kind of going to put an end point on the past few weeks. All right, so the spot price of uranium down slightly today, 47.25 a pound mid market. I need to make a correction, but actually did purchase some uranium on Tuesday, 100,000 pounds, hence the drawdown of their cash. Um, yesterday, they, they did not raise any money or nor did they buy any additional uranium. They did close at a pretty wide uh, more than 8% discount to NAV yesterday. However, we're seeing spot price down today and the spot trust trading up. So we're creeping closer to uh, trading at parity with the with their net asset value. And once we get greater than that 1% premium, they can issue shares into the open market at 50 to 60% of the daily trading volume to raise capital to buy uranium. And that is what we are expecting when we have a little bit more of a risk on environment across the markets. And we are definitely not there yet. Um, Sput Trust continues to sit on only 22.7 million in total cash. URA and URNM both reported no changes in outstanding shares yesterday. Pretty calm day in the markets um, for the most part. Actually, yesterday was a pretty heavy down day for the markets and for uranium shares as well. So, and URNM, it looks like they only have a one day lag, so no shares uh, redeemed yesterday. We'll have to wait and see tomorrow, which I will report on Monday, whether or not URA. Um, had any redemptions yesterday. I wouldn't be surprised if they had some small redemptions yesterday. Okay, let's take a look at the charts. URA up pretty nicely today. Uh, volume, kind of average volume, nothing really too spectacular here, but up uh, almost 2% on the day. Uh, the markets just closed five minutes ago. Um, didn't quite close on the high on the day, but we did outperform the broad market significantly with the S&P down over half a percent. And I'm going to show you that correlation chart in just a minute. URA holding up within this uh, accumulation cylinder, still well below that 200 day moving average. We need to get back up above that strongly on decent volume in order for this to really turn into a bullish chart, at least for the short term. For the long term, of course, we still remain in an uptrend. We did hold that lower low from January and we are still in that accumulation still cylinder hanging on still. Looking at a basket of miners, URNM relative to the S&P, um, beautiful outperforming candle today. Uh, we Obviously, we did hold that trend line from last week that I've mentioned many, many times in the past, how uh, this trend line has represented, uh, a visit to this trend line has represented an uh, uh, interest cycle bottom for these pullbacks from the uranium sector. Perhaps it represented the same last week, and I did highlight that last week. Um, so far, so good in terms of outperformance of the S&P Looks like we're heading back up here. Will that last? I don't know. Um, I don't think the risk off environment for the broad markets is over. Um, we saw target earnings come in yesterday with some um, relevant data referring to potential recession happening now and possibly increasing. 
And uh, the bad news is that doesn't look good for economy. The good news is we are likely to see inflation numbers potentially come down sooner rather than later, which would mean um, a Fed pivot, most likely. That is what everyone is speculating on. And I think when that happens, we will see risk come back on and everything is really, really set up strongly for uranium shares here as soon as that moment happens. Uh, Cameco uh, actually underperforming the ETFs today, interestingly enough, um, though generally speaking, has been outperforming most of the sector. All right, so mailbag section, um, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that uh, we just saw in the charts there and that have come up for me recently in the way that I've been thinking about things. So um, as you can see, if you zoom out since March 2020, uranium has outperformed the broad market. And so when we have uh, liquidity crises and these air pockets in the broad market, steep declines, it kind of takes everything with it, fundamentals be damned. But even when we have weekdays in the broad markets, we can outperform. We had the spot price of uranium down today. We had uh, the S&P down today. And we had the uranium shares up today. Why? Why? I don't know. We're decoupling for some reason. I think that the money needs to shake out of the tech sectors of all of the overvalued um, growth stocks that have uh, gone on a moonshot over the past five years and needs to cycle into something else. And maybe we're seeing the early signs of that something else. Um, I think that when this risk, uh, risk off environment shifts back to risk on, we are already going to be in the early stages of outperformance. And I think the capital is going to flow freely and abundantly into uh, commodities. Uh, that's what I'm seeing here. I believe that the dollar is going to turn over, which is going to benefit all commodities. And I think the precious metals are going to skyrocket. I think uranium is going to explode. And uh, I'm not saying we're out of the woods yet. In fact, I'm, I'm definitely not saying that. I think we still could see some downside here going forward over the next weeks to maybe month or two. That is totally possible. Uh, but, but when we turn, you have to understand that the fundamental setup for the sector is phenomenal. And that ultimately will tell the story of where this investment is going. In the short term, we can have liquidity crises and influence from other markets that uh, when, the, when the, uh, the commodity itself is not in a steep uptrend, you're going to see capital pull out simply to take risk off the table. That's exactly what we're seeing here. And you have to understand these, the fundamentals. This is why we focus so deeply on the macro and the newsletter, because if you don't get it, if you don't understand what's going on behind the curtain, then you easily get shaked out. I always get shaked out of investments that I'm in for reasons that I shouldn't be there, right? So maybe there's somebody I trust on Twitter who makes a tweet about something. I say, oh, well, you know, I want to diversify and I just pop a little bit of capital into something. I can get so easily shaken out of something I don't understand, which is why it's so easy for me to hang on during volatile times with uranium because I get it. I know what's going on in the fuel cycle. I understand what's happening on the supply side. These, by the way, I, I made a kind of a brief note yesterday. I'm going to reiterate it today. Supply chain constraints, this is real. This is happening. And the expectation that supply is just going to come on like that, even from previous producing mines like MacArthur and Langer, I think that's absolutely insane. And if the utilities are expecting that we're going right back to uh, uh, the free flowing abundant cheap uranium, which I know that they're not, but um, it's only a matter of time before we see uh, heightened buying and restocking of inventories by utilities across the board. That is, that's what's coming. And um, if you recognize that, it can make not only the volatile downside easier to weather and to hold through, but if you have uh, capital to allocate, it can give you conviction to allocate that into a market where emotions are running high, into a market where um, there's a lot of fear. I mean, fear is off the charts right now. Uh, so, and I think um, it could get worse, of course, but, but if you know the fundamentals, if you know what's going on behind the curtain, if you know the fuel cycle, if you know where supply is likely to be interrupted, if you know the demand is only growing from here, the conviction is high to allocate capital during these moments uh, where everybody is fearful and where there's a lot of doubt in the market. Um, I have no doubt whatsoever. I'm, I'm really pumped right now for the, the coming months and years. And as soon as this market turns, it's going to be, I think the moves are going to be explosive, which is one reason why it's very difficult to time the perfect bottom. Um, it's difficult to trade in and out of these things. So hopefully you all are hanging in there. I won't see you tomorrow. As I mentioned, our members webinar will be happening in the morning. And uh, so with that said, have a great weekend. I will see you again on Monday. Cheers.